Hi guys, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands-On Learning. And today I'm going to show you 12 different activities for math and literacy that are Easter themed. And these activities are great for children ages four through say about seven years old. And I have here the first activity. This one is working with trigraphs. So trigraphs are three consonants that blend together at the beginning of a word. And so here, this activity, you're is um, little baskets and on each basket has a trigraph and um, there's a whole bunch of them um, I'm just showing you two of them here and what the kiddos are gonna do is they're gonna look through some cards that are little Easter eggs and they have to match them up to the right basket so this card would go with stir for string and then I have stir for street I have spur for spring and then spring Spur for spray. So just to show you how they would sort them. And then um, there's just a, a bunch of different ones that come with the set and they're just gonna keep sorting and there's gonna be two eggs for each of the baskets. This next activity is a math activity. It's working with addition and subtraction. So there are um, word problem cards that look like this. Some of them are addition like you see on this one and you can see that we've been using it. So I've got some dry erase marker on it. And um, some of them are subtraction like this one. I just have two of them out here to show you. Then it comes with a number line like this and a little um, rabbit guy that you attach to a clip. Um, and he's gonna hop. So he is our Easter rabbit. This is Peter Rabbit. And we're gonna use him and our number line to help us figure out the answer. So what the kids are gonna do is they're gonna take a card and they're going to read the word problem. So this says Peter Rabbit had seven eggs. So they're going to take Peter Rabbit and they're gonna use the clip to clip him on the number seven on their number line, just like so, okay, because he had seven eggs. It says he lost two. Hop back to find how many are left. So he had seven. The, another thing they're going to do is they're gonna use their dry erase marker and they're going to write their number sentence. So he had, he had seven eggs and then he lost two. Now we're gonna to hop to find how many are left. So they're gonna take their little Peter Rabbit. They're gonna hop back two, one, two, and they see that five are left. So they're going to write five. Okay, and they're gonna do the same thing with the addition cards. So here's an example of one. Peter Rabbit had four eggs, so I'm gonna write four, and then I'm gonna start Peter Rabbit at the number four. And it says he found six more, four plus six. So we're gonna to hop to find how many in all. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he is going to end up with 10 eggs, okay? This next activity is um, some shape puzzles that are Easter themed. And I just pulled out two of them to show you because um, when I give them to the children, I usually just give them two at a time. And so here are the pieces and they have to match it up. So here I have trapezoid and octagon. So I'm going to go ahead and put my octagon here and my trapezoid here. And I know my octagon has eight sides and I know my trapezoid has four sides. This next activity is another math activity. There are three different mats that come with this activity. This one looks like this. There's one that looks like this and one that looks like this. I have not laminated these last two that I'm showing you yet. So I'm gonna use the one that I did laminate to show you the activity. Okay, so here's the one I did laminate. And what the kids are gonna do is they're gonna roll, you just need one die. They're gonna roll the die and they're gonna practice counting teen numbers. So on these little Easter eggs here, it says 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this mat is gonna practice counting um, from 11 to 16. This mat, this other mat I showed you here also practiced 11 to 16. And then this mat practices 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Okay, so going back to this mat. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna roll their die and I rolled a two. And then they can use any manipulative you have to cover up whatever number two was. So number two on my chart here was 12. So they're gonna look for the number 12. And I have, for my manipulatives, I have some Easter eggs. These are actually foam stickers, but we are gonna use them as manipulatives. And so um, I'm gonna have my student 
use these to cover up their answers. So, okay, so I rolled the two and on my chart it says two is 12. So I'm going to look on here and find one that is the number 12. And I see the number 12 right here. So I'm gonna use my manipulative to cover it up. And actually these work perfect because it's almost the exact size of what I have. But you can use any manipulative you have at home. If you have, um, even coins are uh, a manipulative that everybody might have, or um, you've seen, I have actually a video all about different manipulatives that we use. So check out my channel and um, I'll try to remember to leave that link below too if you're interested in watching it. So anyway, so we're just gonna keep on rolling until they've covered everything up. So I, I rolled a one. That says 11, so I'm gonna look for an 11. Here's an 11 and I'm gonna cover it up. And the kids are just gonna keep going until their entire mat is covered. This next activity is a literacy activity. This is working with rhyming words. So um, the kids are gonna get cards that look like this. I pulled out two of them to show you. And um, they're gonna put a card in front of them and then all they need to do this activity is some manipulatives. So I um, decided instead of using my eggs that I showed you for this activity, I pulled out some buttons. And my buttons have magnets on the back because sometimes we use them on cookie sheets. But like I said, you can use any manipulative you have. Okay, so we're gonna look on the nest and on this nest is a bug. And then they're gonna cover up all the eggs on the card that rhyme with bug. So I see rug and I see mug and dug and tug. So now that card is finished and I can go on to another one. And obviously like you see, everything is Easter themed here. Okay, so I have a bed. So I'm gonna cover up red and fed and Ted and that's it. <laughs> All right. This next activity is skip counting. And um, I made this activity because my um, children really are working on skip counting right now. And so I have cards that are for skip counting by twos, cards that are skip counting by fives, and cards that are skip counting by 10. And they're all different. I only pulled out three of them for you um, right now, but um, if you do get the download, they come with lots of different cards and different pictures. These are just some of the examples. Okay, so what the kids are gonna do is they're gonna take a card, let's say they're gonna be practicing counting by twos, and then here you see there are two chicks in each basket, so they're gonna count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and then they're gonna use a dry erase marker to write how many. All right, this one is counting by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. <laughs> You're hearing my little guy in the background. And then this one is counting by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Okay. This next activity is practicing short and long vowels. So you have to decide what you want your students to practice. Do you want your children to practice short vowels or long vowels? So the short vowel mat looks like this, and then the long vowel mat looks like this. Okay, and it tells you on the um, bunny here if it's long vowels or short vowels. Okay, so this one is the short vowel mat. And all the kids are gonna do is you're gonna give them the short vowel cards if they're working on the short vowel mat. And they're going to take the first card. They have to read the card. It says big. And then they're gonna look at the picture and cover up the picture that matches on their mat. So I'm gonna use my little Easter eggs here and I'm gonna cover up that picture. And they're just gonna keep on going until they've read all the cards. Get. And they're going to cover up. Now I'm gonna look for that matching picture. It's right here, so I'm gonna cover it up. Hat. Now I'm gonna look for this matching picture. And um, they are making sure they're reading their words correctly as they do it. Bug. I'm gonna cover up this picture because it matches. And they're just gonna keep going. Once they go through their entire stack of cards, they will have covered up every single picture on their mat. Okay, and again, you can use any manipulative you have. And the uh, long vowel mat works exactly the same. If you're gonna work on the long vowel words, then give them the long vowel word um, cards. And they just have to look for the picture to cover it up after they've read it properly. This next activity is another literacy activity, and this one is working on reading fluency. So what you need for this activity is just on one of the mats, it comes with more than one. This is, oh here, it comes with this one, it looks like this, this one's already been colored in a little bit, um, and comes with this one. I'll do this side to kind of show you how it works. Uh, just need a dry erase marker if you laminated yours, 
and um, otherwise you can print them out as many times as you want and they can um, just use crayons or something. And then um, you need a die. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna roll the die and I got a five. So I'm gonna look in the box for five and I'm going to read. It says, do you like pizza? Do you like cheese pizza? I like pizza the best. And once they've read it correctly, they're gonna color in one of the Easter eggs. Um, if they roll a five again, they're gonna read it again and then they'll color in the second Easter egg. They're gonna continue until they've read each one twice. So all the Easter eggs are colored in. Um, and this practice is fluency because they're rereading, they're going over it again. It also, um, the way I wrote the sentences is repetitive. So like, for example, this one is, the pet store has fish. It has big and small fish. Matt will get a fish. So they're, they're pretty repetitive. On this um, mat, I tried to use kind of some East, more Easter themed um, sentences. So like I have, Bob has an egg basket. He has five big eggs. He will paint his eggs. And then this one's about a, a fluffy chick. And this one's about flying a kite in the spring. And this one's about a rabbit hopping and rain, it raining and that kind of thing. So this, if you use this mat, um, it's a little bit more Easter themed reading. This mat does the exact same thing, but none of the um, stories are Easter themed. So this next activity is a math activity and it's working on ordinal numbers. So ordinal numbers are the numbers that you say when you're counting something in its order. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, so on. I only pulled out a few of them here for you. Um, but what the kids are going to do is they're going to take a card. These are clip cards. So they can use um, clips to clip their answer like a clothespin clip. Or they can use manipulatives like I have here, like my buttons and they can cover it up with a manipulative. So this says fifth on it. So I'm going to try to find the fifth um, object on my card. One, or first, second, third, fourth, fifth. The bunny is fifth, so I'm gonna cover up the bunny on my card, just like that. So um, that's what they'll do. They'll just continue on with all the cards, practicing, counting, ordinal numbers, and covering up or clipping their answer. This next activity is working on syllables. So syllables are vowel sounds that you hear in a word. And it's little egg puzzles and the kids have to match it up. So this is a picture of a sheep. Sheep has one syllable, so they're gonna match it up with the number one. And butterfly has three syllables, butterfly. So they would match up with the number three. And then there's just a handful of different ones in this pack and it's practicing words with syllable with one syllable, two syllables, and three syllables and four syllables. This next activity is working on filling in sentences with missing words. So um, a lot of times these type of activities are great for children learning context clues. So they have to read the entire sentence to figure out what is missing by thinking about what the sentence is talking about. Um, and then this particular activity works on long vowels. So those, the words that are missing are only long vowel words. All right, so this is a great activity to do in a pocket chart like I have here, but you don't have to do it in a pocket chart. You can just do it right on the table and that will work fine as well. Okay, so. Here's an example. So this one says, did you pick a red? And then they have to decide what the missing um, word would be. And then there are cards, I'll show you over here. There are cards that they would look through to figure out what goes in the sentence. So I have the answer right here. The answer is rose. So I would just slide that right in there in my pocket chart. He blanked to the party. He came to the party. Now you can give the children all the cards at once um, or if they're a child that needs a little bit more, um, uh, less choices, you could give them just three cards to choose from or however you wanna do it. Um, works just fine, just depending on the student and what their needs are. Okay, so this one, Spot has a dog bone and Sam sang a tune. Okay, so there's just a few of them there and then um, there are many more cards that come with this download. 
Okay, we are on to the very last activity that I have for you today. And this is missing numbers to 100. So there are four different maths that look like this. I only pulled out one of them for you to, just to show you today. And then I pulled out the cards to go with this mat. So for each of the four mats, there are different cards that go with the different mats. Um, so these cards go with this mat, so I pulled these out. And what the kids are gonna do is they're going to just go through their cards. I pulled out this card and they're gonna look for this picture on their mat. And I see it's right here. And I have to write the number that will go in that spot. So here I have a 14 and a 16, so I know the number that will go in that spot would be 15. And I would write that missing number with the dry erase marker on my card. Now, um, the reason I say dry erase marker is because I've laminated mine so we can use this activity over and over again. All right, so I'm gonna grab another picture, or another card, and I'm gonna look for this picture. This picture is right here. It is the picture of the bunny rabbit. Okay, so it goes right here. If I was counting 71, the next number that would go in that spot where the bunny is, is 72. So I'm gonna write 72 on my card. So basically they're just figuring out what the missing number is on the uh, 100 chart in the space where the, each picture is. So they're gonna continue on until they've finished all of their cards and they've written the numbers for every single spot on their 100 chart that has a, you know, a missing number, a picture in the spot. Okay guys, that is the last activity. Now I wanted to tell you that I'm very excited because all of my seasonal activity centers are complete. So these were my Easter centers that you saw today, but I have centers for every other season of the school year. So I have fall centers and I have, um, I have Thanksgiving centers and Christmas centers activities, just like you saw today. I have um, sp other spring activities that you just saw, uh, just like what you saw today. I have, what am I missing? I have winter activities like what you saw today. And they're all in one big giant bundle. Um, and you can save if you purchase the full bundle um, of all of the seasons. However, you can, um, if you rather just have the Easter centers, you can purchase them in a bundle as well, um, separately, and that's a little bit cheaper. And then um, even if you only wanted, let's say one activity that you saw today, you can purchase them all individually as well. They're all up there on my site, and I will leave links below um, to that as well, so you can check it out. And um, let me know what you guys think, and thanks for watching. I appreciate you watching, guys. And if you haven't heard, I am currently working on my new phonics curriculum and I'm super, super excited to share it with you. Um, I believe I will be able to start putting it up on my site next week and then starting to do some videos about how I teach phonics. I'm gonna do a video that literally um, talks about why I teach phonics and how I teach phonics. If that interests you, um, stick with me and hopefully that video will be up sometime next week, if not the following week and that's gonna be fun. And it's not gonna be just talking about my curriculum, it's going to be talking about um, how and why I teach phonics. So that'll be a lot of fun. All right guys, I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening, bye.